Hey guys, Scott from the recordingsolution.com. I wanted to share with you a cool mid side miking technique. And mid side just means middle and sides. And I, I don't know, about a year or two ago, I recorded a friend of mine named Chris Thompson. He's the drummer for the multi platinum selling country act Eli Young Band. I think they have an actual number one song on the chart right now nationally um, called Love Ain't. I believe it's Love Ain't. So go check that out. But Chris is a great drummer. Um, when Eli Young Band was blowing up, we used to open for them in Texas. And so we became friends, and he asked me to do some side project with them. So we brought him into New Braunfels, and we did a little studio just drumming session with them. But we, I tried this mid-side miking technique. And I'd never done it before, but basically what you do, and it's really cool, it adds a cool stereo feel, and I do it on the, on the room mics. So say this mic, this is going to be your middle mic can be any mic, and you point it at the drum kit, okay? And this needs to be a cardioid mic, cardioid mic, so it's only picking up what's in front of it. It's gonna reject anything to the side of it, and it's gonna reject anything from behind it. So I'm pointing it at the drums. And then this mic is gonna be in a figure eight pattern. Anything, any mic that has a figure eight pattern you wanna use. So it's going to capture the sides, and then it's gonna reject the front and the back. So it's only gonna pick like a figure eight. Just imagine a figure eight waveform. It's only gonna pick up where those the circles of the eight are and reject the sides. So what you would do is point this at the kit or at the sound source like that. And then you set this mic up right next to it as close as possible. And you record two separate tracks of the same source. And then when you bring it in the DAW, you got to do something where you duplicate the side track, the, mid, the, the figure eight pattern. You duplicate that track. So you're going to have three tracks. And you flip the phase of one of the duplicate figure eight pattern tracks. Um, and I'll explain that more in depth in the mix. So let's show you inside Pro Tools what that sounds like and how you can process the figure eight pattern mics a little different to add a bigger stereo image of your drum kit. So let's go inside the DAW. I use Pro Tools, you can use any DAW. I'll show you how to set it up in Pro Tools, okay? Okay, here we are in the actual session. We're gonna focus on this, these solo tracks right here. So here it is, the way it sounds with just an EQ plugin on the overhead or on the mono room mic and this little EQ on the sides. Okay, so there's no processing on any of this stuff except for a little EQ. So what you see here is, right now, here's the mono room, the mid. And then this would be the, we use a ribbon mic, and that would be the figure eight mic, and then I duplicated it, what we talked about, made a duplicate. Because when you do mid-side processing with this mid-side mic technique, uh, there's this thing called mid-side decoding, where it's like the sum and difference matrix, called the sum and difference matrix. Basically, you have to add one of the side mics to the middle and subtract one of the side mics to the middle. So the way you would do that, all you need to know is when you're recording, and it's I did it while I was recording, you would have to slap an EQ, um, on one of the one of the mics here you could actually duplicate make three tracks while you're recording i think that's what we did we made three tracks while we were recording we had one mono and then i set the input for this for the side mic the figure eight pattern so say it was mic interface on number two i would set each duplicate track to number two so recording two copies of that same mic if that makes sense so it would be the exact same thing right here coming in these two tracks. And then I, I put a, uh, a plug-in on it, um, and we flip the phase going in to tape. So when you flip the phase of two copies of the same instrument, of the same track, they're going to be 180. You're going to flip the polarity by 180 degrees. So you're reversing the phase, reversing the polarity on the two 
duplicate tracks. So if you have one source, complete identical source, you have two two copies of the identical source and you flip one 180 out of degrees, you're pretty much going to cancel each other out. So let me show you what that sounds like. So let's solo. I bust these two tracks into a master fader track. And I pan one hard left and hard right. Okay. Now if they're flipped 180, the polarity is flipped 180, they're out of phase with each other. If I move this over to the left with this one, the waveforms are going to line up completely out of phase and you're going to lose the actual volume. So check it out. It went away because the waveforms are canceling each other out. So that's what we're talking about, phase issues. You flip 180 degrees out of phase, you're going to lose the volume. Okay. And I don't know the science behind all this. I just know you need to do that. So when you're recording, set up three tracks, one for the middle, the mid, one for the figure eight pattern, and then another one for the figure eight pattern and set the inputs to the same input, mic two, mic two on your interface, interface, and then flip the phase of one of them. And that's just this little button right here, right there. All EQ should have that, most of them. And then I bust those, like I said, to this master fader so I could control the overall volume volume of those two side tracks. So these are the sides and this is the mid. And then all I did is on the mono room, on the mid room, just roll off the low end because we're going to get the low end from the actual kick. I'll keep these overheads off for training purposes and then bring in the mid mic the mono mic and then on the bus the master bus of the sides I did similar high pass filter but then I just boosted the high end here just to try to get a different EQ a brighter EQ on the sides of the stereo image so that way when I bring the sides up you get a wider stereo image okay so let me solo that I know it sounds kind of mono, but let me mute one of those. So it's not perfectly left and right, but it you'll see what it does when it, when I bring it in with the with the mid the mono mic just adds more space to the stereo field. So let's settle the kick and just the mid mic, so you're going to get a super mono sound here. Now I'm going to bring these sides in. You can play around with the EQ to make it sound right, but you just see how it adds a super cool stereo space to your to your room mics. So it's off that these are these side mics are not in, and I'm gonna slowly bring it up and just look what it listen to what it does to the stereo field. So it just gives a cool stereo image, a nice room sound. So try try it out on your next recording. Try the mid-side technique on your next recording. Uh, it was pretty fun. I'm sure you could uh, mangle these side mics and the mid mic and kind of get a cool, unique sound from doing this kind of stuff. So try it on your next recording and in your next mix. And uh, let me know how it worked out for you. Um, below, you can grab a bunch of free tools in the descriptions. You can get a free EQ chart. You can get a free compression chart. You can get a free home studio blueprint and a uh, bunch of free training. So follow along, subscribe, hit the bell so you get notified if any new content I release. And comment below, let me know what you think, if you liked it, if you don't like it, um, and if you've ever used it on anything else. Okay? Scott from the recordingsolution.com. We'll see you on the next video.